comment section going to be lit on this one? So I'm not a competitive shooter, but I've shot in a couple competitions, and every single time the scoring completely confuses me. To the point where I figured it would be easier to make my own app than figure out how USPSA style scoring works. That's not actually true, but... So in competitive shooting and in range fox, you measure the raw time that it takes you from the beep to the last shot to run your drill or your stage or whatever it might be. But in both range fox and competitive shooting, you have to adjust that raw time to account for your hits. Running a stage or a drill really, really fast, but having bad accuracy isn't the idea, and running a stage or a drill really, really slow with good accuracy isn't the idea. The concept is to balance speed and accuracy. So in competitive shooting, the way that they do this is with power factor and hit factor. Again, I'm not a competitive shooter, but this is my take on things. Base balance. hit factor and power factor together and now you have your score in competitive shooting. Ah. However, gamers gonna game. So what's happened is people have started taking 40 and downloading it, making really, really light recoil 40 caliber rounds and running competition with that so that they can score a major power factor. If all we're gonna use power factor for is to penalize people running production nine millimeter pistols compared to other people who are running space guns that you need an engineering degree to figure out how to unload or load or turn the safety off and they only work with hand loaded, downloaded 40 cal designed specifically to hit a major power factor so that we can score more points. Like, I don't see the practical application of that. I'm not buying it. Needless to say, confusing as shit. However, I do agree that you need to relate accuracy and raw time together in some way. I just figured there was maybe a better way. So let's talk about how it works in Range Fox. Number one, no such thing as power factor. I understand some people are gonna get super butthurt about this, but the way I see it, if you wanna train with a 22 for your own personal protection, have at it. I don't wanna stand in front of a 22, do you? Number two, let's talk about what adjusted time means. Let's take a build drill for example. Six shots, center mass. Range Fox is gonna take your raw time and divide it by your percentage of A-zone hits. If you're running an IDPA target, it would be your percentage of minus zero zone hit. And if you're running a hit or miss style target, like a TA target's mini ADAP, then it's gonna take your raw time divided by the percentage of hits. Now let's say we take the same build drill, but you drop a shot, and take a makeup. The way Range Fox calculates your adjusted time in that scenario is your raw time divided by six out of six A zone hits. Your penalty there is the extra time it took you to take your seventh shot. In my opinion, this results in a little bit simpler way of penalizing you if you make a run and leave your drop shot. I hear it all the time, accuracy trumps caliber, and I agree with that. So use whatever caliber you want to, but let's train to a higher accuracy standard. The whole point here is that I wanna make standards-based training more accessible for more people. This just seemed like a little bit simpler way of doing it to me than hit factor and power factor and smash them together and pull them above and turn them mix it and use your score. I'm hesitant to say that I'm gonna make one of these videos every week because there's a ton of time that goes into a couple minutes of footage here. That said, I'm trying to make a video like this every week and next week's is gonna be on how raw times and adjusted times come back to you as usable data within RangeFox to help you continue to improve, stay motivated, and track your progress over time. Stop buying Gucci gear and start buying more ammo. Start buying more ammo. Start buying, buying more ammo.